Let me show you three AI tools that every architect should be using by now and how to actually use them. And no, it's not the kind of AI that tries to steal your job. It's just the one that actually helps you finish your drawings faster. I'll break down how I approach each AI tool during different parts of the architectural design process, but of course you can adapt them to however it fits best your process. Oh, and before we start, huge thank you to Rayon Design for sponsoring this video, but more on them later. Now you've probably seen Nano Banana all around Instagram and seen how some architects are using it. Personally, I think it's a very strong ideation tool and brainstorming tool as well. A powerful way to sketch out very quick ideas and with the latest updates to Nano Banana, the Nano Banana Pro, the results are unreal as you guys can see right here. So this first example I think is really useful for turning your satellite image into a better photo. Now we all know the frustration when you go check the site of your project in Google Earth just to find that the image is in a very low quality, very low resolution. And it's practically unusable, but with Nano Banana, that actually changes. So I'm going to go to Google Earth and search for my site, right? Which is this one. So I'm going to take a screenshot of the site view and then go into Gemini AI. Now, to make sure you're using the pro version of Nano Banana, just make sure that it's in thinking mode right here. And you can also select the option create image from the tools menu, which is this one right here. Now comes the magic. You're going to type in this prompt that I'm going to put on screen right here. I'm not going to read every prompt I place on the video because it would be a really really long video so you can pause the video and screenshot this prompt and then i'm going to hit enter and in a matter of seconds my really bad satellite image all of a sudden is a really nice drone photograph of my site that actually i can use now before you download the image i want to make sure you prompt it back again just say upscale to 4k and this is going to obviously increase the resolution of your image and make it look much better that way you'll get a better resolution version of this image this is a pretty Pretty cool feature right now sometimes it nails it immediately it just it's the exact replica of your site and of course sometimes the output makes absolutely no sense now massing ideas another cool way of using nano banana and honestly the way that i am most addicted to right now is to use it for different massing ideas so to have like a volumetric session of different shapes and forms that you start to modify only through language adjectives and verbs which i think that is is the beauty of prompting that you have to use your words to design so that's why for this part i'm using my trusty sidekick which is operative design a catalog of spatial verbs which describes in detail all of the possible verbs and adjectives that could exist when doing massing exercises as you guys can see in some of the preview images right here i talk about this book a lot if you guys want to check it out i'll leave a link in the description so this is the prompt that you can use and here you want to make sure you select your words correctly right so for example this is the result of the image when i specified to create additive volumes versus when i prompted it to create subtractive volumes so the more specific you can be with your words the better nano banana will work for you if you're very vague with your words it might not work as well now, what I like about this stage is that I'm still the one that's setting the rules. AI just reacts to them. One thing I want to clarify is that this is not the moment to decide your design. This is just idea hunting, right? We're hunting for ideas. So sometimes I'll generate 10, 20, or even 30 different variations and only keep one interesting roof angle that can fit into my design or one good massing gesture. That's the whole idea behind AI, that it can assist my design process and give me a lot of ideas that I can work with. Now, another example that you can try is by instead of volumetric maquette style images, you have a doodle style napkin sketches kind of style and the only thing that you need to do is attach your reference image which in this case i will use the one that we previously created with this massing exercise and attach this prompt that i have on screen right now and here are some of the different sketchy doodles that nano banana created and from there i could go on and change styles again which in this case for example i prompted it to change the style of this image to a realistic render to which after we have a realistic render we can prompt nano banana for example to change the angle of the reference photo so so i can prompt nano banana to take the picture from another angle which in this case i wanted it closer to the building and by changing the view a couple of times this all gave me some ideas on what my design could be or in what direction it could go 
which is really useful. So one extra way of using Nano Banana, which I think I would need an entire video on just to explain how it works, and it's by organizing your prompt in a way that is easy for Nano Banana to create a precise image only from text. So the prompt structure is the following. First, you want to start with a photographic style and conditions, like for example, this one example that we have right here. Then you want to describe the architectural form and how it sits on the land. Then you want to describe the materiality and construction details. And finally, describe the environment and the atmosphere. So with this, the image that is generated is actually pretty cool and aligns with what I had in my mind. Now from here, I can modify my prompt and start sketching out ideas with AI and testing different materials. It's definitely a very fun and new way of sketching and conceptualizing ideas, starting from one sketch and going on to different forms of design iteration and spatial configuration. Now, once I have something that I'm actually excited about, the next step is grounding it. So for this stage, I am using Rayon. Rayon is the 2D tool that I use before jumping onto SketchUp or Revit. It's super clean and a very smooth drafting and presentation platform that makes producing architectural drawings a lot faster than traditional CAD software. And now that the AI panel is built directly into the editor, the workflow gets even faster and easier to use. So let me show you how I'm using Rayon Design and its AI today. So for example, for generating blocks, so Rayon already comes with a very big block library that you can use where they have top, front, and side views of pretty much anything that you would need. But if you want something very specific or you're referencing a real product from a brand, you can generate it with the AI block tool. For this demo, I'm importing an image of an actual prompt and letting Rayon generate the three views. As you guys can see, it's really easy. Now I can also turn a 2D plan into a 3D AXO without opening any modeling software. I just grab a screenshot of the floor plan. I send it to the AI panel and Rayon generates the actinometric view in seconds. It's a really powerful way to show spatial design ideas early on. It's perfect for client meetings where you want to communicate the design direction before spending time on a full 3D model. And I can even quickly change the style of my floor plan to a more artistic ones or realistic ones without ever having to go on to Photoshop or any other third party program. One of my favorite parts about Rayon AI is being able to restyle my drawings directly inside the platform. Like for example, selecting a watercolor style, a realistic render, or even a white clay look, which I think this looks pretty cool. This can save you hours from your regular workflow. And the cool thing about it is that it does not take the fun away from the actual design, right? And additionally, if I wanted to quickly test some different material options, I could add a material texture, then prompt Rayon AI to apply the material on a specific area. And this is what Rayon AI gave me with different material options and all of them inside the platform. Now for installation, it's really easy. Rayon is a web-based design tool. So all you have to do is go to rayon.design and create an account. It's very straightforward. As for the pricing, you can create a free Rayon account and start using Rayon on with some limitations and if you're using it professionally they also have pro and team plans with the full editing tools templates and the complete block libraries now if you want a chance to win a rayon pro license comment below this video and answer the question what three ai tools are you currently using right now and why together with the team at rayon we will select a couple of the best answers and hook you guys up now once the drawings feel solid the next step as you know is visualization creating our renders and that is where the tool number three comes in which is d5 renders ai now many of you already use d5 render to visualize your designs but the built-in ai tools can speed up exploration and help you refine your renders much faster than the traditional workflow let me show you how so for example with the d5 and the new ai material generator it's really easy to generate materials based off of a reference image like this one or to find the material you were looking for but didn't actually know the name of. So just by importing the reference image, selecting the material you want to replicate, and in a matter of seconds, D5 will create a new material that you can apply directly to your model. Then after you have your whole model complete, you can try different mood and lighting tests in a quick and easy way using the AI atmosphere match. So this is great for mood exploration, but I wouldn't rely on it as a final lighting setup. Think of it as a starting point that gets you 60% of the way there instantly. 
So if I'm doing, for example, final client renders or competition boards, I'll still fine tune the lighting manually outside of D5 render. But for early mood tests or quick iterations, the AI tool saves a massive amount of time. And as you know, vegetation scattering is usually a lot of chaos and a lot of computers burning up. But the AI scatter tool within D5 render actually makes this process controllable much easier. So I just have to bring up the D5 AI assist panel, describe what type of scatter I need, and then just click on generate. It's easily one of the fastest ways to add vegetation without losing your mind. Then after you've rendered your image, D5 Render has a great post AI processing interface where you can enhance the textures of your render, use the inpainting tool to enhance characters, add some vegetation, or just fix some areas that you didn't have time to fix in your model. It should not replace good modeling, but it's amazing when you're in a rush. And additionally, after enhancing your renders, you can also play around with the AI style transfer option within D5, where you can choose from different image styles like a maquette style, or even turning it into a night image, which looks pretty cool. The caveat here is that it modifies a lot of the original geometry and elements in your original design. So it still remains a tool that you can fiddle around with and get some ideas, but you won't be able to present this to a client or have this as a serious presentation. Now here's a quick before and after so you can see what the AI adjustments actually do. What I'm looking for in these adjustments isn't realism, it's more clarity on the concept and design. So does the lighting make the geometry readable? Does the texture feel consistent? Does the atmosphere communicate the mood of the project? The AI within D5 Render helps speed this process a lot. So those are the three AI tools that I'm currently using a lot. Nano Banana for messy ideas and ideation, Rayon Design for actual drawings and perfecting my 2D work, and D5's built-in AI tools for the final visuals. And I do want to keep testing more AI tools in the future, but I'm going to give a special priority to the ones that enhance the architectural workflow and not the ones that are trying to make the design process obsolete completely. So remember, use AI with intention. Keep the design thinking yours. That part, the design thinking, is still our superpower. And if you want to see other videos on AI, click on this playlist right here. I'll be uploading more videos on AI in the next couple of weeks. Let me know what AI tool you want me to test next. Thank you all for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.